Welcome back to Polar Crossover. It's a basketball show for the Filipino community. My name is PJ. Joining me, Marky Mark with the scarf, Golden State T-shirt, and we got Mara. Hello. Hi. If he's Marky Mark with a scarf, what's what my rhyme? <laughs> um, oh, what's my rhyme? Mara Moneyball Aquino. Uh oh. No, there's no rhyme. <laughs> it's just <laughs> Mara Moneyball. M M. M and M. M and M. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Okay. So let's talk about you. Let's talk about your career. You're from Toronto, Ontario. I'm from Toronto, just here in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. And then you end up be becoming a sports not sportscaster, uh, on court reporter, right? And also that Moneyball. Host, so talk talk about like how'd you get to that uh, get to that position? Well, um, I started off with the NCAA, mm -hmm. so I believe you had James Forrester on one of your episodes. So yes. um, I actually started with James. We no were way. there the same year. We wow. met in the NCAA. Um, I was a courtside reporter there also, mm -hmm. and then. We basically um, got promoted to PBA. <laughs> you promoted so together. Yes, together. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm proud of that guy. <laughs> yeah. So um, I started off with the NCAA, and then they gave me. I've always wanted a game show. Always, always mm. wanted a game show. Mm -hmm. And I put it on my vision board. Mm. I put game show host. Mm -hmm. And then it didn't exist at that time. But then um, they came up with this new game show called Moneyball Dribble of the, Dribble of the People, which is their very first halftime game show. Mm -hmm. PBA has never had like an interactive game show before. So basically you download an app mm -hmm. and um, while there, it's the halftime on, instead of you changing the channel, there's a game going on. Mm -hmm. So you could be playing from home. Wow. So you're playing from home and you're answering the questions like who scored the first three points? Is it A, B, C? Mm. So that's what the game is about. Is it related to the current game or is it just trivia about PBA in it's, general? There's always a question about the current game. Oh, so you have okay. to be paying attention. Oh. And then there's also the trivia. Mm. So you can be talking about like, um, uh, when is James Forrester's birthday? <laughs> is it A, B, C? So that's what how... What is it? What is it? Oh, oh my God, I'm such a... Okay. <laughs> <Let's>... <laughs> Moving to commercial now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but did you... When you, you said you put on the vision board, did you know it would be basketball related or did you just want... A game I just... Show? Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be basketball related, mm. but it all worked out because mm. I started from the NCAA and that was my promotion to the PBA. Mm. So I got in the PBA and since I was already in the game show, then they made me courtside reporter and then they also made me host... Um, it's called Sports 5 Center. Mm -hmm. So it's like during the halftime. So people don't switch off the channel, mm -hmm. right? So there's something going on yeah. throughout. Mm -hmm. yes. that, that is what they wanted. Like, to, like, you know, network want you to stay and not switch off. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. they, you know, in every network, um, they find that for halftime, the ratings go down. Yeah. So to do oh. something, put in a game show. Yeah. Like, you know, the dribble of the people. And it's actually pretty popular because um, when I YouTube Moneyball, obviously, because you're coming into the show, there's actually clips of families yelling at the TV. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't even yeah, know that. Some, uh, oh, I gotta check it out. Two, 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 three, three. Or like, oh, oh hindi, hindi. So they're, they're yelling at the, because they're oh, really interacting with the TV, the, the TV because yeah. As a family, it's a way for them to like, you know, to play, to, to play and yeah. to like show their smarts. Wow. So yeah. It's pretty fun. So if you guys are in the Philippines, download the app and play. <laughs> did you have really, did you have experience in Toronto, I guess, here um, with basketball reporting or reporting in general? Absolutely before? not. Oh, wow. So did how did not, it happen? It just, yeah. Yeah. Can I, is it, is, can I be honest? Yeah, yeah sure. Oh sure. my yeah. God, it was a total Go. accident. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was basically, somebody told me, you should audition, you talk a lot. Yeah. Mm. You should audition as a VJ. So I honestly thought, mm -hmm. you would think of VJ, what, what would you, music. first? Music. Music, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I thought it was going to be a music VJ. Mm -hmm. So I auditioned, thinking when we're talking about music, and it was basketball. And it was sports, actually, <laughs> yeah. sports yeah, in sports general. Yeah. They made me read um, from the teleprompter, mm -hmm. uh, Tagalog words, mm -hmm. and I couldn't really speak at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I knew the basics, you know, kamusta, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn. And later on, they, they're like, okay, we need a, a VJ, but we also need a courtside reporter for the NCAA. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I, mean, I knew basic basketball, but I didn't know Filipino basketball. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was really hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew, I, I knew at that time it was going to be such a big challenge, but it's one of those, if Something gets offered to you, and it's such a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. You take it, mm -hmm. and you do it. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if you're not good, you'll lose it. Yeah. But if it's right there, you grab the opportunity, because sometimes it only comes once. Exactly. Wow, I, so you I, take I'm that. feeling motivated. Oh. Like, I want <laughs> an opportunity. No, I'm not. You're me. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, how, how many, so how many years have you been, or how many seasons have you been hosting um, Moneyball? Moneyball, or, since yeah. 2013. So, wow. I guess this is my... Oh wow, this is my fifth year. 
Congratulations. So yeah. you grabbed it and you really you hold hit on it. to it. You didn't yeah. let it go. <laughs> if, <laughs> I, if, I, if I said no to yeah. that, then I wouldn't be where I am right now. And yeah. it's really great mm -hmm. representing. I'm, it's really great representing Canada there. I mean, every time mm. I go there, it's like, yeah, I'm from Toronto. Mm. How did Filipino you learn Canadian. that Tagalog? How did, uh... Kailangan eh. Yeah. Mm. Kailangan. You know the saying, my favorite saying is, um, survival of the best adapted. Not the fittest, because mm. you can be the fittest, but if you yeah. don't adapt, That's true. you'll just get left behind. But mm. if you can adapt to anything, any situation, whether it's a breakup or losing a job or mm. going to a new country, if you can adapt to that, you will survive. So it's really survival of the best adapted. Mm -hmm. So I'm in there. Uh, I wanted to relate to, the, to my fellow Filipinos and what's the best way to relate to them is if you can speak the language. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. if I couldn't, and because of the job, the NCA, if I couldn't speak Tagalog, mm -hmm. I would lose that job. So I had to adapt. Mm -hmm. And then five years later. Oh, you get yeah. Tagalog is really good. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And you were born in the And Philippines. I was born there. You sounded more like... Kailangan, talaga yeah. nag talaga nagbabasa ako hindi ko naiintindihan ko anong binabasa ko pero kailangan nandun yung yeah, pronunciation yung kailangan nandun yung accent ng matigas yeah. yung accent mo talaga yung, <laughs> yung, yung pronunciation mo on top, like on yeah. point like because yeah. i really wanted to learn like i yeah. really wanted mm. to learn the language and i want to sound like a true filipino yeah. so now when i speak english yeah. you can you will be able to hear yeah. Filipino like, accent yeah. here yeah, and there. I can, I can totally hear yeah. it. I thought you, you, you were born there. Like, mm. I yeah. yeah, you will, you will hear yeah. it. So let's let's dive back into the basketball aspect. You're mm. on court reporting. How, or maybe tell us, maybe there's a story or maybe fans now because of your personality in the PBA. Can you talk about maybe um, an experience where fans interacted with you or um, I don't know, maybe you have good friends uh, in the PBA. I don't know if you can have friends if you're a reporter. But what's that like? What's that dynamic like? Um, I like to keep my... I, I have a few friends in the mm -hmm. PBA, but yeah. it's usually I would... Um, not outside. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to be friends with everybody. And in terms of like the interaction, Filipino fans are wow. Like I, I would just be walking in the mall, money ball! <laughs> <Money ball. laughs> like, yeah. yeah, they love a lot of Filipinos love PBA. Yeah. I mean, they're so passionate about the sport mm -hmm. that if you're part of the PBA, it's a privilege. Yeah. You feel yeah. you feel like you're part of a something bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really great to be one of the very, very, very few people from Toronto. That's and true. then going to another country and then being in where the where the passion is. It's yeah. like the number one sport right yeah. there. That's like the culture, like Phil yes. the basketball in Philippines so is like the culture. Like yeah. my tita, when we went back to the Philippines, they kept asking us questions about PBA and like, we know a little bit, you guys know a lot. Yeah. And like, they know every like players and stuff. Oh, like they're, crazy they're crazy there, they're crazy. And sometimes Kung Pogi, like yeah. we have we have another Filipino Canadian man there, Matthew, right? Yeah. Oh, when he comes in court, in the court, you'll hear the girls like, ah! <laughs> so they love Matthew there. Yeah, because yeah. he looks half. Yeah, yeah. So true. the pretty boy look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's, your, what's your most favorite interview, I guess? You interviewed a lot of people, I don't know, countless interviews. Who's your favorite person to interview or Ooh, even reverse? Who's the boring, interview. who's the most boring interview if there's <laughs> a flip side? Anyone, oh, I don't want to oh, say Oh, like, oh, just talk no, about no. that interaction. <laughs> Not the name, the maybe like... The funniest and then your most favorite, I guess, like that you had. The funniest, who would be the funniest one? I can't think of anything at the top of my head right now. I mean, we got different people, like, yeah. uh, even basketball player. Yeah. The funniest yeah. basketball player. Or the funniest interview you've ever had. Or personality. Who's yeah. well, a funny personality or a good personality that you like talking to? Uh, oh, um, yeah. the funniest would yeah. be funniest players. Yeah. I can think of two right now. Yeah. Mark Pingris mm -hmm. and Jared Dillinger. Mm. They're so funny, especially Mark Pingris. He likes to joke a lot. Yeah. And then the more serious ones that would have like literally like two no answers, answers yeah. would be like a Jason Castro, <laughs> June Marfa Hardo. They're yeah. really great. Yeah. But players. when you're trying to interview them, it's like, whoa. <laughs> totally. Yeah, then, they're, yeah. they're shy. Mm -hmm. They're quieter. So it's kind of hard sometimes to get things out of them. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that's trick? the challenge. How do you, how do you? That's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So what I do, I usually try to ask them, I talk to them before yeah. we interview, just to, you know, mm -hmm. to ease things Break up. The ice, yeah. And then I try not to tell them what my question's going to be. Mm -hmm. Because if they're shy and you ask them a question, and you tell them, okay, this is what I'm going to ask you, and you tell them the three questions you're going to ask, yeah. they're going to answer that in one question. 
So then oh. on the spot, you kind of have to think about the next few questions. So yeah. you have to be a really quick thinker. Improv, yeah. Yeah. If you were to look back um, at the first year you became an on oh reporter, what advice would you give yourself before jumping into the fire? Um, if I can give somebody an advice yeah. before yeah. jumping in, know your stuff. And practice, 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 mm -hmm. practice. Um, if you're going to go on air, have somebody always to record what you're doing so then you can watch it later. So mm -hmm. you can see, okay, I don't like how I said that. Mm -hmm. I don't like how I smiled or I didn't smile enough mm -hmm. or I was speaking too fast. Mm -hmm. So always watch yourself, always know your work and always have a peg. Mm -hmm. That's my, if, if someone's going to come to the Philippines and want to be a courtside reporter, who's your peg? Who do you want to be like? Mm -hmm. So then you can kind of have like an image of what you want to portray, like how do you, what's your image? Mm -hmm. How do you want to speak? Do you want to be like a serious sportscaster or do you want to be a bubbly sportscaster? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's all about your personality and how you brand yourself also. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can differentiate yourself with other courtside reporters. So with me, I'm the, I'm the perky one. I'm the loud one. I'm yeah. the live one. Yeah. And then there are other people who would be better with, um, with other segments because they have the, maybe the, the, serious mm -hmm. um, style to it and yeah. I'm more of the let's play a game type of <laughs> yeah. uh, reporter yeah. sportscaster there the cheerful bubbly one yeah and then what else would I advise them um, you're always gonna get a lot of bad comments so if you're kind of weak for that don't look at your Twitter comments mm -hmm. or just you kind of have to have a tough skin because mm -hmm. sometimes you think that you're doing a good job but somebody will make a comment or a producer will be like no you, that wasn't good Wow. And if you did get a good comment, put that in your pocket, but you can't get, let that get in your head. So there always has to be something that you can improve on for the next time. So wow. I, guess, I guess that's what's, what's with a lot of the jobs, I guess. So, so many great, so many great you know, tips. Even I like, didn't learn I'm a lot. Yeah, any, watch it. Anything you'd like to shout out to, uh, any shout outs you'd like to give before uh, we end? Oh, that was quick. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. There's so much material. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so much, this is so much fun. Yeah. Okay, um, well, I guess I would invite all of you to watch the PBA. Um, it's actually on ESPN5 now. Oh, wow. In there, so they, they TV5 and ESPN mm. kind of merged. Mm. And um, it's every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And of course, every halftime, you gotta play Moneyball Dribble of the People. <laughs> oh, there it is.